Welcome to this moment of prayer hosted by The Upper Room. I'm Lindsay Gray, Editorial Director for The Upper Room Daily Devotional Guide. I'm glad to be here with you this morning. In former times, we gathered in the chapel to pray with and on behalf of the world. During this global crisis, we are gathering together virtually for this moment of prayer. As staff of The Upper Room and partners with you in this journey, we are so honored to have this time to pray with you. On this day, when many of us are filled with the anticipation and anxiety of a new week, when COVID-19 is still surging in the United States and around the world, we come together before the Holy One. We come together because that is what we do. Wherever you are, home, work, hospital room, taking part in activism, in prayer, in lament, whether you are alone or with others, know that God is with you, right here, right now. As we begin, I invite you to take some deep breaths. Breathe in the love of God and exhale any tension or worry. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all your creation, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture today is from Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. I will be reading from the NRSV. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. This morning, I would like to invite you to join me in a practice uh, called Visio Divina. I'm using, I was hoping to use a resource from the upper room called Sight Psalms, and technology is not going to uh, allow that today. So as you're listening to this introduction, I invite you to find an image near you. It could be a photograph, a piece of artwork, um, your, what you see out your window. It doesn't need to be anything special, but find that, um, that piece. It's a, we can lead this uh, activity in just a moment. Uh, Sight Psalms from the Upper Room is an offering that appears daily on upperroom.org, and each day a Sight Psalm presents a photo with a caption designed to encourage reflection and prayer. These photos are also available as a free email subscription for those who would prefer it that way. Our hope is that Sight Psalms will help you to practice noticing God's presence in daily life, through photography, or simply as you go through the day. Today, I will be leading us in an exercise called Visio Divina, which grew out of Lectio Divina, praying the scriptures. In Visio Divina, we spend time contemplating an image and allow it to fill our awareness as a form of meditation and listening for God. Meditating with art is not a new practice. For centuries, Christians, particularly in Orthodox and Catholic traditions, have used icons, candles, 
stained glass windows, and other visual tools to focus prayer time. Praying with an image invites us to pray with our eyes open to the world and to make prayer a more physical experience rather than a primarily mental one. In the Eastern Orthodox tradition, icons are understood to be windows into the divine presence. And in a similar way, photos of creation, art, the faces of the people around us are opportunities to recognize the image of God in the world. Sight Psalms is thus an invitation to pray contemplatively with our eyes open to the world and open to receive a word from God. So I hope you have your image handy. Again, a photo, a piece of art, what you see out your window, the face of the person sitting across from you. As we begin, I invite you to take another deep breath, breathing in God's presence and breathing out any distractions. Look at your image. Let your eyes stay with the first thing that you see. Keep your attention on that one part of the image that first catches your eye. Try to keep your eyes from wandering to other parts of the picture. Breathe deeply and let yourself gaze at that part of the image Now let your eyes gaze at the whole image. Take your time. Look at every part of the image. See it all. Reflect on the image for the next few moments. What emotions does this image evoke in you? What does the image stir up in you, bring forth in you? Does this image lead you into an attitude of prayer? If so, let these prayers take form in you. Write them down for yourself or share them in the comment section if you desire. Now offer these prayers to God in this final time of silence. Let us continue in prayer together for ourselves and for the world. Loving God, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. O oh God, enliven the church for its mission that we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace, 
that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for our communities. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who have died and those who mourn. Fill the emptiness of their loss with your never ending peace. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. God, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may minister in your name with your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And now may you accept life as a gift and live life as a way of giving thanks. Go in peace, for the Holy One goes with us all. Amen.